we are less than a week away from the deadline for tax loss selling when investors can sell an asset or stock at a net loss. Let's see how traders can benefit from tax loss harvesting and what they should watch out for when selling securities with Jason Pereira. He's a financial planner and portfolio manager at Woodgate Financial and IPC Securities. Thanks so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. So can you first just give us the big gist of, of, of sure. tax loss selling and, and uh, you know, the purpose behind it? Fair enough. So we all know we got to pay taxes on our gains in any taxable account, right? Yeah. Tax loss selling is a way to take advantage of the fact that you lost money through the year, which is a negative, but you can turn it into a positive. And what you have to do is you sell the security and you can't buy it back for up to 30 days. And if you do that, you're allowed to declare the loss in the same tax year that you basically that you took it. So it basically reduces your tax, taxable gains by the amount that you lost. If you don't have enough tax, taxable gains in that given year, you can carry them back up to three years or carry them forward indefinitely to when the point when you do have a gain. So when, when should an investor be thinking about doing this? I mean, we're talking about the deadline right mm -hmm. now of less than a week away, but um, should they be thinking about doing it right now or are you thinking about it throughout the year? You should be definitely thinking about it throughout the year. We always talk about this time of year, but in actuality, we don't know when the market's going to drop throughout the year, right? Like it doesn't always drop during Christmas. Sometimes Santa Claus rallies show up. Yeah. So reality is is that you should be looking at your portfolio on a regular basis and when there's a big correction or a big downturn that's the time to take this opportunity and say okay well I've had a material loss not just you know one dollar or five percent whatever else it is but enough that you know what I can harvest this and use it to basically reduce my total tax liability yeah it's interesting because if somebody was thinking about doing this you know maybe a month or two ago then um, and, and stayed out for for mm -hmm. 30 days they might have missed out on on some pretty big gains at the end of this well, year you don't have to sit in cash that's a misnomer right mm -hmm. So you can buy something else. You just can't buy the exact or close to identical thing. So for example, you know, the old example is you can sell Coke and buy Pepsi, right? Not the same company, but driven by the same market forces, mm -hmm. right? Or in broad market indexes, you can basically sell the TSX 60 and you can go back and buy the composite, right? So there's, op there's options where you're not just going to be letting it sit on the sidelines. It can still be productive. And are there some rules about, um, you know, in terms of uh, investing in your spouse's accounts or something yeah. like that, which yeah. also would be uh, not not, not allowed. So let's be clear. You can't just sell it in your name and then buy it somewhere else or in another account. It can't touch you. So reality is you can't sell in your taxable account and buy in your TFSA or your RSP or your spouse or any, or any connected person like a child's account for whatever reason or a corporation or trust. So when you're selling it, you're selling it and you're not going to hold it for that 30 day period. And so that is the, the superficial loss or so it would be Exactly. Called. Yeah. So if it's less than 30 days or any reason, it's a superficial loss. Yeah. And what happens there is that the loss that you had, you're not allowed to take it that year. It gets added to your cost base. And eventually when you sell, you won't pay tax on that amount. It'll just bump up your cost base. Problem is, you gotta, you're responsible for tracking that. It doesn't show up in your custodial reports. So if you screw this up, you could screw it up later on when you pay, when you pay taxes. Let's say you, you sold at a loss uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Do you have to mm -hmm. use that in your taxes this year or could it be next year or how would It could would be next play? year, but you know, time value money. You're always better off getting it now, right? Mm -hmm. So if you had a capital gain this year, by all means, you're gonna wanna write it off against now. And then, so, and then going back, if you had capital gains in previous years, you're gonna wanna do that as well. Is there a limit to how long you could wait if you wanted to or anything around no. that? Carries forward indefinitely and there's no limit to how much you can do either. <laughs> uh, in terms of um, uh, Americans living in Canada, there's something they should know about this? Oh yes. Okay. So the American rule, so if you're an American living in Canada, you're subject to both tax codes, right? So I just explained how it works in Canada. Mm -hmm. In the US, it's similar, but it's called the wash sale rules. And what I just said about it gets added back to your cost base doesn't apply on the American tax return. What happens is it doesn't get added to your cost base the next calendar year. So you're still going to pay if you basically had gains that you thought you were going to reduce the, the, the gain on with the, with the loss, that's not going to apply. That's hmm. not going to apply if it's a superficial loss, right? So it's a, it's a big problem because you can actually have it, you know, for most people, it's not going to affect them. But if you're talking big accounts with a lot of trading, you could end up basically owing the IRS while owing nothing in Canada. In what sort of scenario do you think uh, Canadians should yeah. be thinking about, I'm just going to pay the taxes on these gains and, and not try to, you know, do any of this sort of um, offset? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, if you, you don't have to do this, yeah. right? You don't have to do this. And you don't have to be, you're, and frankly, this is not an elimination of the tax. It's a deferral, right? So if I mm -hmm. hold something for 10, 15, 20 years, and I double, triple, quadruple my money, right? And I take advantage of tax loss harvesting now. All I'm doing is I am basically saving tax now that is eventually now I've got a, now I bought it back at a lower cost base 
and I'm going to pay more tax later. So it's a deferral mechanism, not necessarily one that is going to net benefit. Now, one other thing about Americans to be aware of, Americans have a, different between, a difference between short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. If it's traded within, a, if a gain is earned within a year, it's taxed as full income. If a gain is earned after a year, it's taxed as capital gains. It's a big difference. Those tax rates are hugely different. Mm. So if an American basically, to capital, uh, capital, gain, uh, capital losses are more valuable to Americans because they can convert it into a lower tax form of income, they benefit more. Beyond the uh, superficial loss, um, and you know, perhaps you accidentally did at 29 days or something yep. like that, are there other you know, big mistakes or things that people um, can you know, do uh, that you know, uh, challenge this, that sort of get in the way of this, or get, get yeah. in the way of benefiting? I wouldn't from say this? so. I think there's the three things we, time, we yeah. talked about. One is the timeline, the other one is the, uh, is the different accounts, and then basically, um, well, really the two. And actually, the one last I'm going to say is you have to keep, be aware that it is the day of settlement that matters, not the day of the trade. Mm. So the day for the last day for tax loss harvesting is the 27th this year because it's trade plus two days to settle. So if you go and do this on the 29th and you think you're going to take that loss, sorry, that loss only applies to the following calendar year.